This is our review of the best live streaming software for PC in 2024. After testing all the leading options, we'll share the top Windows live streaming platform or app right now so that you can learn how to go live like a pro. Option number one is StreamYard. And this one's a little bit different to the other options I've got coming up because this one isn't software that you need to download and install on your computer. This one runs in your web browser. It means that you can use it on a lot of different devices too. So you can use it on Windows, on Mac, on Linux. You can even use it on your phones as well. It's got a really easy to use, really intuitive interface and they make it really easy for you to get up to speed. So connecting your social media accounts is literally click of a button, adding your webcam or your camera, checking all your mic microphones, all of that stuff, really simple. And that's kind of the theme that flows through here is that even simple stuff like changing different views or different scenes as other software calls it, StreamYard has templates or scenes that you can switch between without needing to configure them all up. They're literally right there under your main preview screen. So if you wanna switch between yourself, full camera to a screen share, maybe a screen share with you down the bottom left-hand corner, you can literally do that with just the click of a button. It's also got built in an amazing guest feature as well. I absolutely love this. They make it's so easy for you to generate a unique link that you can send out to someone They can click on that link and they can then appear as a video source or a guest that you can bring into your live stream. And that's obviously then when those presets and templates for the different scenes or different looks become even more powerful because you can switch them not just for yourself, but also the different layouts for your guests and things too. They also make it really easy for you to multicast or simulcast your live stream out to multiple places. So you could be going live to your YouTube channel and to Facebook all at the same time. And they have a combined comments view. So you're able to bring in comments into one place where you're able to monitor wherever you're live. So you don't need to go and check on YouTube to see the comments on there and Facebook on there. It's in one place. They also make it really easy for you to feature or to bring those comments on screen just by selecting on them, they'll then appear on the screen, which is great for interaction, great for engagement, and they look good. And you've got the same ability in adding titles and things as well. So you can actually create these ahead of time so that you've got them good to go. You just click on them and they'll appear, or you can actually easily make them while you're live as well. Another really big advantage with StreamYard over a lot of the other options is because it is run in the cloud, because it's run through your web browser, a lot of that pressure is on StreamYard's end, which makes it great for you if you've got a lower spec computer, or maybe you wanna bring in a lot of guests, or maybe you wanna stream out to a lot of different places at once. The only real load on your system is sending your video feed through to StreamYard or maybe your computer screen as well, not needing to manage all the extra stuff. Now, when we're looking at StreamYard as a web-based live streaming solution, there's actually quite a few other options out there as well. Some of them are very, very similar. StreamYard right now is my number one pick, but I will say if you are looking for something very similar, but you're looking for that next level of customization, then maybe something like EVMux could be a good option for you. But there's one other big standout feature for us that is now in StreamYard as well, and that is their StreamYard on air, which is essentially built in webinar software in StreamYard too. And I absolutely love it because it means that we don't need to go and have an additional program tool or thing to learn running webinars and running live events like we do. We're then able to do it in that familiar interface of StreamYard. And we actually received a lot of positive feedback when we switched from our previous webinar software to StreamYard. A lot of our viewers loved the experience after seeing what we were using before and moving to StreamYard and hey, I prefer it. The other thing that I absolutely love about StreamYard is that they are actively listening to their community. So they're constantly running live streams and engaging with their audience. They have their own community where they're taking feedback on board to help build this tool out to be what their audience and their customers actually want. And I absolutely love that. Now, in terms of pricing, there's a couple of different options. There is a free plan where you can jump in, you can test it out. There are some limitations like watermarks and things on that free version. So that's where for most people, I suggest that you jump on their basic plan, which is $25 a month if you're paying monthly, which works out as $20 a month if you're paying annual. And that's gonna unlock things like obviously removing that watermark. It's gonna allow you to multi-stream to three different destinations, three different places. You can have up to 10 on-screen guests or participants as well. But up from that, the professional plan will let you do full 1080p live streams. It'll let you multi-stream to more destinations at once. It'll give you the ability to use an extra camera as well. And this is also where you get to access their StreamYard on air, so the webinar functionality as well. You'll 
you'll need to be on that professional plan for that, which is $49 a month or $39 a month if you're paying annually. So if you are someone who likes to geek out and configure everything and really dial everything in, then some of the other options might be a better fit. The next option is Prism Live Studio. This is another one that I'm a big fan of that's actually grown pretty quickly as well. And the amount of features and things that you can do in here is pretty cool. So unlike StreamYard, this and the other options are software that you will need to download, install on your computer. And Prism Live Studio works on Windows, it works on Mac. There is also an iPhone and Android versions as well. Oh, and it's also completely free. So the overall interface is pretty intuitive. It's easy enough to use. It's not as easy to use or as intuitive as StreamYard, but it's also got a lot more features and controls in there too. Again, they make it easy for you to go live to any of the major platforms. You can also multi-stream to multiple destinations as well. Just like StreamYard, you can monitor your comments in one place. Even if you're multi-streaming, it pulls them into the one place where you can view and interact with your audience. But you also have the ability in here to add widgets onto your live stream as well. So you can actually bring up your live chat feed and display it in your live stream too. They also make it really easy to add things in like animated GIFs and stickers and music. And there's even a drawing mode where you can draw live on your screen too. You're also able to create different scenes or different presets and templates and things for you to switch between while you're live. So while StreamYard had some of those preset ones that you could configure up, you're really starting from scratch in Prism Live and the other options I've got for you as well, which is pretty standard for live streaming software. But it is easy for you to build these out and you can reuse them on different streams too. So you'd likely build out a scene for your camera full screen, another one for you sharing your computer screen, maybe one that's a hybrid of both. So it's got your computer screen and it's got you down the bottom corner. And again, you can easily switch between these while you're live and you can even make minor changes and configure them up while you're live as well. But overall, there's a lot more customization in here for that kind of stuff than there is in tools like StreamYard. You can even enable a more advanced mode called studio mode where you're able to configure stuff up while you're live, but it's not actually pushed live. So it's almost like this demo display preview area where you can bring up titles and things. And then when you're ready, to send that to your live stream. You can click a button and then that becomes live. But you also have the ability at any time to switch back to the more basic mode where whatever changes you make are pushed live instantly. There's even a feature where you can remotely control the app from your phone as well. There's also a built-in virtual camera too. And I absolutely love this. I use virtual cameras all the time. So this is where essentially Prism Live gets detected as a webcam in other software. So it could be Zoom calls, webinars, whatever it is that you're doing, but you get access to all the controls and features of Prism Live studio to control what that webcam looks like in those other tools. So if you've ever wanted to bring up text or graphics or images inside of Zoom without needing to manually share your screen and all of that stuff and just do it live on your webcam, then that's what the virtual camera is for. So overall, I think Prism Live Studio is an amazing option for someone beginner up to maybe a high level intermediate user as it's a good mix of simplicity, but it's also got a lot more of those professional tools for those that want more. The next one is OBS and it's another great free option. It's probably one of the most popular options for live streaming out there. And I think maybe Prism Live might have borrowed some inspiration or something from the OBS interface and from the settings area and everything because the two are so similar in a lot of ways. Like the way that the scenes and the camera inputs and everything work and a lot of the advanced settings, there's a lot of overlap. But I'd say the biggest difference is that OBS to me, it's not as intuitive. It's definitely not as polished as Prism. And it can be a lot more overwhelming, especially for a beginner to jump in, to get up to speed, start live streaming. There's almost like a much bigger learning curve in OBS than there is in something like Prism. Don't worry, we've got you covered. If you do wanna learn these tools, a lot of these we have already created tutorials for, which I will link in the description box below. But for those reasons already, I'm gonna be positioning this as an intermediate level user through to advanced because of that extra learning curve. But also it is the next level on features and controls and things that you can do in there too. So OBS works on Windows. There is a Mac version, there is a Linux version too, but there's also a huge community of users and developers behind this too with lots of different community created plugins and add-ons and more features and things to expand the usability of OBS as well. So if there is something you're looking to do and it's not in OBS straight out of the box, 
it's likely you could find some sort of add-on or plugin that's going to help you add that feature. So some examples of that, OBS doesn't have a built-in guest feature like we have with StreamYard. And there's also no built-in out-of-the-box multicasting or simulcasting as well to allow you to go live to multiple places. You can do those things in OBS, but it is with some of those extra plugins and things that are needed. But overall, again, you can really think of this as Prism Live on steroids. So if you're someone who is after a great amount of control, someone who really wants to dial everything in and customize things up, knowing that there is a bit of a learning curve when you first jump in, then OBS could be a good option. Now, for those of you that are looking for something even more advanced, literally professional grade live streaming software, then that's where you can't really go past vMix. This one is Windows only and it is literally professional grade software. So you do have the ability in here just to use it at its basics connect a camera, maybe add some titles and things, go live to wherever you wanna push it out to. But if that's your use case here, then I would definitely recommend one of the other options. If you're someone who really wants to dive into multiple cameras, multiple scenes, bringing in guests, running live interviews at a production quality level, then this is your tool. One of my standout features in here that I absolutely love is ISO video recording, where it's going to record as separate video files the different video inputs that you've got in there. So if I'm running three different cameras here, I could just record the finished live broadcast where I've already kind of edited on the fly and switched between the different cameras. Or with ISO video recording enabled, I've got separate video tracks or separate video files for each one of those devices. Meaning then I can take this into my editing software and I can really create what I want after the fact as well. So if you are running live events, multiple cameras, then yeah, this is a great tool. Now in terms of pricing, at the time of filming this video, there is a free 60 day trial. So if you feel that this could be something you're interested in or something you're interested in learning, then you could grab that as a good starting point. But above that, you've got a lot of different pricing options. Some of them are one time paid and they also have a subscription model as well. So I love that you get the options here. But you can see here for a lifetime license, basic HD, so 1920 by 10, 80 basic features, then that's starting as $60 as a one-time purchase. To unlock more features, more inputs, that's where you could go the HD plan, again, still 1920 by 1080 at $350. Right up to Pro, which is unlocking all of their features here for 1200 US again, lifetime license. Now that does include updates for the first 12 months, or I guess this is where the subscription comes in. It's $50 US per month to unlock the features here from the pro plan, but you're also obviously not limited to updates beyond that 12 months if you're still on the subscription. So rounding all this out, if you're someone who's looking for something simple and easy to use, maybe you're a beginner through to an intermediate level, then StreamYard could be a great option. Obviously, if you wanna bring in guests and that kind of stuff too, that's probably the pick. If you're still looking for simplicity, but access to some more advanced features and controls, then that's where the Prism Live Studio would be a good option for you. If you're someone who geeks out on features and controls and things and wants the next level above that, and you're starting to evolve and you're building out quite the live stream production, then that's where OBS could be a good fit for you. Or if you're someone who is at the most advanced level, someone really looking to dial everything in and use production grade tools, then that's where vMix will be your pick. For me personally though, on Windows when I'm live streaming, it's normally StreamYard that I'm going to first, especially if I'm gonna bring in guests or I'm gonna need to do something pretty simple. Beyond that though, I'm really pumped on what Prism Live Studio are doing. And I love how they're kind of making OBS, but easier. And I also absolutely love the built-in virtual webcam feature in there. So for me, those are my top two picks out of that short list. Now, if you wanna dive deeper into some of these tools, I've got videos linked on screen and below in the description box, we've got some tutorials to help you even further with these. And as always, there's a bunch of other resources and things down there to help you too. I'll see you in the next one.